Yeah, as just mentioned, the UK and France have joined Washington in warning Damascus over a possible chemical attack in Idlib. But Germany has taken a step back for now, saying negotiations should be held between all parties there. At the moment, it's all about preventing a humanitarian catastrophe in Idlib. In order to do that, we are holding negotiations with all parties and, of course, first of all, with our allies. Well, Berlin has been hesitant to support U.S. strategy in Syria in the past. It declined to join Washington, France and the U.K. in strikes on Syria this past April. The joint military action came as a response to the alleged Duma chemical attack, with Washington accusing Damascus of masterminding the atrocity. Around 70 people were reportedly killed in the attack. The Syrian government denies any involvement. At the time, the UK's Prime Minister came under heavy criticism for siding with Washington. Members of this House seem to have less say in foreign policy of this country than President Trump. Yeah. Let no one in this House be in any doubt that neither I nor this government take instructions from any President or any other national government. Well, scepticism over a potential attack in Idlib is also being voiced by the opposition in the UK, with the shadow foreign secretary saying Britain doesn't rely on information from terrorists and that in the event of an attack, it would be crucial to wait for the OPCW to respond. Well, let's cross live now to Mike Raddy. Mike is co-editor of BSNews.com. Mike, good to have you back on the show. The UK Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, has promised, quote, a strong and united response in the case of chemical weapons being used by the Syrian government. France says it won't tolerate any use of chemical weapons. Bearing those statements in mind, could that mean Washington's allies are still leaning towards supporting a strike, despite, as we were just speaking about, scepticism from some quarters? Yes, absolutely. And, and I think this is more worrying than the strike in, in April. Um, but it's, it's important to point out that the, when any Western leaders, whether it be Macron or Theresa May or Trump or any of their representatives in government, um, whenever they talk about a retaliatory strike for the use of chemical weapons, they're not addressing the Syrian Arab army. They're not even addressing the Syrian government or President Assad. They're addressing the al-Qaeda, their proxy armies, al-Qaeda affiliates in Idlib. And effectively what they're saying is the hotline is open. You can call in your own airstrike. All you need to do is provide a, a pretext. However lame that pretext may be, give us something we can sell to our publics back home and we'll have the cruise missiles in the air. So that's the mm. message. The message is, is directly to al-Qaeda and its affiliates in Idlib. Germany, as we were saying, seems wary of a strong response calling for talks on the issue of Idlib. So there's almost like a tug of war going on on the continent. How do you think other European countries are going to react? Where will they fall down on? Which side? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really matter because the, what we've seen before is, is the French, uh, the British and the Americans will go it alone anyway. Uh, it's interesting, this the last couple of weeks we've heard that the Dutch government has been supplying arms to terrorists in, in Syria. So um, I think on the whole, uh, we always got uh, Norwegian special forces obviously inside the country, as well as US and UK special forces are apparently trapped, 200 of them trapped in Idlib. So. Um, I, don't, I think on the whole, European countries have been supporting al-Qaeda in, in Syria. Um, I think Germany's basically, I think it's been cautious because it has other interests at heart. It has commercial and, and trade and economic interests with Russia that it doesn't want to jeopardise. So um, maybe that, that's a, a, a note of optimism that, that Germany's been fairly cautious. But I don't think it will change anything. I, you know, we don't even need the OPCW to go in and investigate. If, if you remember the last time in April, I was in Damascus at the time, uh, the, the West cruise missiles were raining down before, while OPCW was still in Beirut crossing the border into Syria. So, um, yeah, there's no, all, all that's needed is a pretext. And what we've yeah. heard already in the last couple of days is, is there are news media in Idlib and they're ready to get the cameras rolling for uh, the false flag. So um, okay. I expect it to hit the actual tomorrow morning's news. Uh, just to, clar uh, then just the to clarify, Mike, weekend. Yeah, just for some of our viewers saying uh, about other European countries supporting al-Qaeda, uh, you know, they would say they were supporting rebels, but of course we know there's been crossover between the two, hasn't there? YouTube, Mike, has suspended the account of Syria's state news agency. Do you think that's an effort to suppress information coming from non-Western sources on this particular issue? 
Yes, absolutely. And, and especially because of this um, pretext, this false flag that we're talking about, they only want their approved um, media outlets that are there in country already um, to actually get any footage and get it out to Western media companies so it can be aired within the next 24 or 48 hours, I guess. Um, I, this is part of Theresa May's kind of crack down on what she calls fake news is, is she's gone after the social media companies like Google and Facebook and actually said to them uh, whenever we want to we want you to, to close shut this outlet down shut that channel down mm. and that's what's happening and uh, you know as, as far as the, the, the their claims of free speech go that that's just a lie I think the um, they will always side with governments uh, whenever whenever they're asked to Mike, just finally, on that point we were speaking about uh, a few moments ago, the UK's Foreign Secretary, uh, Shadow Foreign Secretary, has urged caution over Idlib, saying London cannot afford to act uh, before the OPCW, that's the Organisation for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, investigates any potential chemical attack. That kind of scepticism, that kind of doubt coming from Washington's allies, do you think we will see more? Yes, hopefully. I mean, I think Jeremy Corbyn was saying exactly the same thing back in April, that they needed to wait at least for some initial investigation. I mean, even, even the, the criminal Tony Blair actually went to the trouble of producing a dodgy dossier. Theresa May's done nothing. She actually produced no evidence whatsoever. There was the, the footage from the White Helmets that um, uh, Pearson Sharp and, and uh, Robert Fisk debunked when they went to, uh, to Duma in April. Um, so, yeah, they don't need to wait for evidence. They don't need to, need to wait for an investigation. They certainly don't need to wait for OPCW or any other agency to apportion blame. They're already blaming the Syrian government. They're already saying that President Assad has authorised a chemical weapons strike. So, the, you know, the, the strike, or the alleged strike hasn't even happened, but blame has already been apportioned. So, you know, what, what can we say apart from that it looks like very likely there's going to be a big strike? And this could lead to, obviously, this could lead to a conflict with Russia and World War III or the final World War, as, as we should be calling it. The thoughts of Mike Raleigh, co-editor of BS News, live on the programme. Thank you.